Welcome to another episode of My Awesome Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Salim, and this is Mike. And Mike, you had a video you wanted to show me? Yeah, yeah. So we've been doing uh, videos at the beginning of the uh, show uh, for a couple episodes now. Yeah. And uh, this is just something that's in my feed that makes me mm. laugh. Yeah. And I'm wondering, is this is this something that makes you laugh or it's pretty nerdy? Okay, let's check but it out. I think we all know that I'm a nerd. <laughs> all right, here we go. I have a bunch of 15,000 volts, two nanofarad capacitors. I'll use my original magic wand that can generate over 100,000 volts to charge my capacitor. And an arc will jump between the legs when the voltage is high enough. Oh. <laughs> wow, that is strong. <laughs> See, the capacitor is so... Oh. <laughs> See, the capacitor is so... <laughs> Always discharge your capacitors before handling a circuit. <laughs> okay, now, here, here's my thing. Yeah. Is that too nerdy? No, no, that was pretty funny. That was great. Because I feel like it's like uh, like when you watch the show Jackass and yeah. you see somebody fall. Yeah. You know you shouldn't laugh at it, right, but it's right. kind of funny. Yeah. yeah. And his his name is uh, Electro Boom. Yeah. And everyone should subscribe to his channel. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, but he has a lot of like educational things. He's got some projects he does. Yeah. There's also a lot of him getting electrocuted because oh, yeah, yeah. he's always <laughs> playing with these high current loads yeah and uh and i don't know i i think it's pretty good yeah that was pretty funny he uh you could tell that he definitely was not expecting that because uh <laughs> that's awesome i'm glad he's okay yes yes <laughs> yeah all right now you uh you had a video okay yeah so uh mine's a little bit on the more serious uh tip but uh go ahead if you want to start that video and we'll this talk is about on the it. more serious tip yeah <laughs> you're not giving yeah. us just the uh, never mind. Yeah. You want me to just play? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Here we go. An Airbnb tenant is refusing to leave after overstaying her welcome at a luxurious guest home in L.A. unless she gets paid $100,000. Elizabeth Hirschhorn booked a long-term stay at Dr. Sasha Jovanovich's guest house in September of 2021 until the spring, bringing her rent total to over $20,000. But since April 2022, she's still been living at the home rent-free and refuses to leave unless she gets her requested six-figure relocation fee from Jovanovich, according to the LA Times. Though Jovanovich has been trying to evict her and has sought help from the city and lawyers, it's not that simple. Hirshhorn had reached out to the Department of Buildings and Safety, which found violations, an unpermitted shower, and that the unit was not approved for occupancy. After she sent these to the city's housing investigator, the investigator reportedly concluded that Jovanovich had to withdraw his eviction notice until the unit was in compliance since its current status violated city codes. But according to the LA Times, Jovanovich also alleges that Hirshhorn blocked him from accessing the home to retrieve necessary permits and to make repairs. And because Hirshhorn had stayed in the home for over six months, the outlet points out that she qualifies for LA's Just Cause Ordinance, which basically states, the landlord is required to pay for relocation assistance if there are no legal grounds for eviction. That is where Hirshhorn's request for $100,000 comes in. For more on this story, head to dailymail.com. Okay, so... Okay. First of all, that was a, a beautiful home. Yeah, yeah, it was really nice. Yeah, and I could see why you would want to rent some of that out at, like uh, as an Airbnb. Uh, very nice. And I don't know if that gentleman has a family, probably, because um, it couldn't be just one person, like just himself. He was a single person staying there. But either way, either way, whether it is or not, man, it's a nice home and, you know, kind of, you don't, you don't usually. This whole thing kind of like pisses me off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get, I get like tenants' rights. Mm -hmm. You, you want to protect them so that, you know, some big corporation or something doesn't just steamroll them and yeah. take away their home that's not cool right but at the same time there are some just people just renting out their home that maybe don't have that much 
Yeah. Like the part that's hitting me is I used to rent out a pre, I had a condo that I bought mm-hmm. when I was young. And then later on, I was living with somebody and we needed a little bit more space because mm-hmm. I had a, like a very small condo to begin with. Yeah. And, and I didn't have a ton of money, but uh, I was able to get enough to buy the second place. Mm-hmm. And and I talked to some friends and, and some people that did um, rentals. And they were like, you should just rent the first place out and instead of mm-hmm. instead of selling it. And then, you know, it was still kind of like a paycheck to paycheck, though, because mm-hmm. they would give me the rent. Yeah. And then I would pay the mortgage with mm-hmm. it. And if somebody did something like that to me, I would be totally screwed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I think there's a lot of people who think that, you know, whether it's from a whether they're renting from a rental company or an individual that um, that them paying the rent is not a big deal. Like basically it's just them paying money, you know, to whatever entity, whether they, and and I think it's always assumed that uh, the company or the person has the money already. So it's not a big deal. Like if you're giving them something extra that they don't really need and you really need to live there. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and it could be very frustrating. Like, I mean, I hate to admit it, but I was at I was in that position as a tenant where my rent was late, you know, a couple of times. And, uh, you know, I try to, like, explain that situation before it's going to be late or whatever, just so, you know, my landlord or the apartment complex would know. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like that's kind of a general consensus. Is it, it almost feels like, you know, renters feel like they're kind of doing those people a yeah. favor. Yeah. For me, I had a uh, I had a renter that paid late several times, mm-hmm. and after like the third time, I was like, "Hey, man, I get sometimes it's difficult." Yeah, but let me tell you the situation we're in. Mm-hmm. I take your money and I pay to the bank. If you don't give me your money, yeah, I can't pay the bank. Yeah, I miss two or three payments. They might try to take it away from me. Yeah, and then we both lose it. Right, right. Yeah. And then it's completely out of my hands. Yeah, yeah, and then. Yeah, I mean, I think I just said that too. It's like, like, which I don't know if, if maybe telling tenants that uh, would make a difference because maybe if they see the whole picture, you know, maybe even if it's not uh, ahead of time, maybe you know if they make a few late payments and then you know you're like, hey, listen, these late payments are not just you know affecting you or whatever. That there, it's a bigger picture here. And to be honest. And it's almost like when you let somebody borrow money, at least that's what's happening in my head. Mm-hmm. Like if I were to loan somebody money and they're like, oh, I'll pay you back later. And then they don't, but mm-hmm. I see them with a bunch of new things. I think, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. Th- that's kind of like I would go like knock on their door to talk mm-hmm. to them. And sometimes they invite me in. Sometimes I we just talk from the hallway. I always saw all these new things. They were always talking about vacations and stuff. Oh, yeah. And I'm like keep playing with me and the bank's going to take this away from yeah. us. And then nobody gets anything. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I just wasn't in the position to pay for two mortgages. Mm-hmm. I, I actually had to rent it. And I yeah. don't know. I, I was hoping it would be one of those scenarios where, you know, somebody else uh, needs a place to stay. I have an extra place and mm-hmm. I can build equity over a long term. So maybe have some money to retire on. It wasn't like I was using the money to buy like, a private jet or a right, boat right. or something. Yeah. I the the thing actually made me like I think it made me fifty dollars a month, mm-hmm. but it built equity. So right. I don't own that property anymore. I've mm-hmm. hence sold it, and and then at that point it was worth thousands of dollars to right. me. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, this situation is is pretty tough too because. Um, you know, they said in there, one thing that just caught my attention was um, that there was a uh, some renovations that were done that were not up to code or didn't have proper permitting. But you would think that in that case, that would be more reason to tell the person to leave because they're like, these things were done. It's not up to code. Like, you know, for what all we know is that you're in an unsafe situation. So at the very least, maybe the maybe the tenant doesn't have to pay anything. Um, and they, but they just have to leave like right away or something. Yeah, this feels like a, like a scam artist that's using the system yeah. to get free stuff. Right. Like, th- what did it say that they have to pay a hundred thousand dollars to relocate? Yeah. So it sounds like yeah. she wants the relocation. You know, and the other yeah. thing is, is how many millions of dollars is that house worth? That right. thing was insane. Mm-hmm. 
yeah. I, I don't know her personal situation, but mm -hmm. if it was like a, I don't know, if it was a more normal house, I would be like, well, these are just normal people hitting hard mm -hmm. times or something like that. Right. But to see that, I'm thinking, well, wait a second. Yeah. Um, there was one, uh, it was, uh, I saw this online and now I wish I had it to show, but it was a scenario where, again, there were, they had squatters. People mm -hmm. just, the, the, the building was empty mm -hmm. and they were, uh, they were planning on doing some renovations. And then I don't know if they were going to rent it out or what, but, uh, squatters moved in while mm -hmm. it was empty. And in certain places, you can't just get rid of them. You can't just open the door and go get out. Right. So they found just like these squatters found a loophole into taking the house mm -hmm. they found a loophole and i and i wish i knew where this was mm -hmm. but basically if uh there was an active lease the law had to enforce whatever the active lease was and so this uh this woman owned the place and she gave an active lease to her son mm -hmm. and they signed it and everything it was all legal and then one day when the squatters went to like the grocery store, the son ran in there, changed all the locks and um, put up all these cameras and then called the police. Mm -hmm. And then when the police showed up, uh, the squatters came back and they're like, this is my active lease. Oh, wow. And they're like, yeah. we need you to get out of here <laughs> yeah. right now. And yeah. then the um, police were basically like, well, do you have anything inside? And the guy opened the door and let them come in to get their stuff. Mm -hmm. But at this point, the police were like, well, he's the legal tenant, so he's yeah. the one that we need to protect. Yeah. And I was like, what a weird loophole. Yeah, that really is. Yeah, you know, there's another case um, that was kind of similar to this where there's a guy who, uh, I, and I don't have the uh, location, but he's basically like living in his van outside of his house while squatters live inside the house. And oh, I heard about this. Yeah, Didn't he start as like a... Was it like an Airbnb thing? Yeah. And he, he was like, oh, maybe I can save up a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. The crazy part about this one is that the squatters or whatever that are living in the house are renting out <laughs> some of the house yeah, for yeah. money. Like, oh, it's just so crazy. And like, I don't know how any of that is any way legal that somebody can't just be like, you know, you need to, you need to go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I understand why we have laws to protect tenants, mm -hmm. but some of this stuff, there feels like there's some pretty big loopholes. Yeah. And it doesn't, it, it feels like you're being taken for a scam yeah. and they're playing the system. And I mean, that one in particular, the guy was saying how he didn't have a lot of money and he came up with this idea. It wasn't something like he was, in the summer, mm -hmm. he was going to live in his van, make a little extra cash, have some savings. Yeah. And then yeah. he gets right. screwed. Yeah. That's just that's that's just so ridiculous. Yeah. So if anybody's out there thinking of uh, you know uh, open your home up uh, to renters or as an Airbnb, just be careful out there and make sure that you you know have the proper documentation and everything. Well, I, I think even when you do have that, yeah. So sometimes they just refuse to leave. Yeah. And then in certain areas you can't. There, there has to. I, I remember where I was. I was in Chicago uh, when I had uh, my rentals. Um, I had uh, two of them and I remember talking to an attorney like, well, what happens if somebody doesn't, what happens if this all goes sideways and mm -hmm. I have to, you know, evict somebody. Yeah. And they basically told me, well, you, you start out with filing all this paperwork and then there's like a waiting period. And I think the waiting period at the time was like 90 days. Mm -hmm. And then the police, then the sheriff can come and evict them. There's all these notices and all this other stuff. Yeah. I mean, I understand some of it, but I don't know. The things we're talking about right now, I just feel like you, you show up for an Airbnb and then you just decide not to leave yeah. and then you demand $100,000. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's an Airbnb. Yeah, it really, it's crazy. What, you, had a, uh, you had something else? Yeah, well, <laughs> I had a uh, friend come over uh, last week, or mm -hmm. I guess, yeah, la uh, well, this week, but mm -hmm. earlier in the week. Yeah. And uh, we're uh, childhood friends, and we started talking about um, like some. Uh, we were reminiscing a little bit, mm -hmm. and it made me think of uh, some of the toys we had when we were kids. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to know because I, I don't have kids, you have kids, yeah. and um, whenever I'm hanging out with friends that have kids, it feels like I see them playing on their phone or on their tablet, right? Yeah. 
And, you know, of course, that wasn't the case when we were kids Mm because we didn't have those things. Yeah. And we had some really cool toys, and I wanted to list a couple of them and see, like, if your kids have anything like this or if they play with anything like this. Do you remember, and not like like at the strip mall or the play center or whatever, but Mm. laser tag was originally for your house. Okay. Like, you could buy them in, like, uh, like, it came as a set. And there was two of them, and they looked like ray guns. Hmm. And then you had to wear this, like, it was like a, I don't even know how to say it. It was, it was, it was probably about this big. Oh, okay. And and it was on your chest, and there was like a strap that went around your waist, oh, and then yeah, I think yeah, it nice. went okay. over your shoulders or something. Yeah. And then uh, a lot of people played in the dark because that's <laughs> the fun time to yeah. play. <laughs> and it would light up if you hit them. Yeah. And I remember one of my friends had it. And uh, just being like little kids, you know, sometimes you do sleepovers and stuff. Mm-hmm. And at night when it would get dark, we'd play in their backyard. Yeah. And we'd run around and like hide in the bushes or beside the garage and we'd shoot each other with a laser. <laughs> and that was really, yeah, that was an amazing toy. I was a little jealous because yeah. I never had it myself. Yeah, nice. I've never had that, but I do know what you're talking about. And uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty uh, interesting. I don't know if those are, uh, I'm sure, I don't know, maybe you can, they're still around. Um most of the time, people, like you said in the beginning, most people will go to like a place to do laser tag. But yeah, yeah. I don't know if uh, kids are know about that anymore. Yeah, and, and I've, I've never seen anyone talk about them ever since. Mm-hmm. I remember um, they got some bad press uh, in the late 80s or early 90s because um, there were some situations, and I think, I think a kid had died because... Mm-hmm. A police officer saw just basically like a black gun looking mm-hmm. thing and the kid was like pointing it at other kids. Oh, okay. And it was in the backyard <laughs> and he uh he died. Oh yeah. Uh, because he got the police officer. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. Um I think that kind of killed that toy. Mm-hmm. But I mean, couldn't you just paint them orange or something or make them not look so... I yeah. don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's, and it's probably something with the marketing of the game because maybe you didn't want to have a bright orange toy for marketing. I mean, it was kind of cool because it was black and we could hide like in right. the backyard yeah. And, and yeah. yeah. And it felt like an adventure, you right. know, when you were little kids and, yeah. and you're playing in the backyard after the, the sun's gone down. And yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, a lot of our current situations within the last couple of years in this country uh kind of diminished that and take <laughs> has taken some of the fun out of like uh toys with guns you know it, well then you're not gonna like the other ones <laughs> i wrote down <laughs> do you remember uh zap it uh zap it. yeah yeah i do it was like a, it was like a squirt gun game yeah 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 but it was motorized, yeah. <laughs> which I thought was insane. And it had, and for people that don't know, it had these little cartridges mm. that went in the squirt gun and it made the spray a certain color. Yeah. So I remember them being like red or blue, mm-hmm. but it was, it was like invisible ink. Mm-hmm. Like we would spray each other and it would show up red or blue, but then a couple mm-hmm. minutes later it would just fade away yeah, into yeah. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it made noises when you shot them. And I remember the same guy that had the laser tag had that. Yeah. <laughs> and we would play with those in the summer. And it was just, it was fun. Yeah. But I understand how the climate has right. changed yeah. and maybe making toy guns is right. not. Yeah. But, I had a, I had a good amount of friends uh, growing up who had like toy guns and, um, you know, for whatever type. And um, well, we all had squirt guns. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, those are a big, big deal. Yeah, as a as a kid, you know, because um, we would have like little cheap plastic ones that were like neon or whatever. And yeah, 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 yeah. yeah everybody fills it up, and then you just run around the yard in the summer. And <laughs> my favorite one, it felt, it looked like um, the correct size, mm-hmm. and I thought it was so cool because it wasn't like tiny; yeah, it was yeah. like a normal yeah. size, but it was uh, it was orange, yeah. so it was like no mistaking yeah. what it yeah. was. It was a squirt gun. Yeah. But um, I love that thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what was worse. It was like when you have like the little plastic cap to keep the water in there. Or yeah. What, and it would break off. So then your water. Should... Oh, that was the worst. That was the worst. I remember I had one that I liked that looked like a ray gun. And I had 
fold it over this rubber band many times and yeah. I would jam it in the yeah. back. But sometimes it would fall out and it would yeah. leak on me and I'm like, no. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, there's a lot of kids uh, these days who will never have, you know, know what fun we had running outside in the summer with those things. But now super soakers are still around, right? Oh, I think they are. Okay. Because yeah. I, I had actually the first super soaker. Mm-hmm. I think it was called um, the 50 or something like that. <laughs> yeah. It was green and yellow. Yeah. And it was from the late 80s or early 90s. Yeah. And it was just, it was nuts because I remember not knowing what it was when I got it. Yeah. And I think I got it for my birthday. And I'm pretty sure my aunt and uncle gave it to me. Mm-hmm. But either way, it had to be explained to me. And then we filled it up. Yeah. And we went out in the backyard and I shot mm-hmm. it. And it doesn't shoot like a normal squirt gun. Yeah. A normal squirt yeah. gun goes for like, yeah. what, 10, 15 feet? Yeah. Yeah. Just about that. This thing went like. Th- I don't know, 20, yeah. 30, and it was a steady, and everyone yeah. was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. Wait you have to like pump it up, almost yeah. like a shotgun pump type thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you filled up the bottle, and you screwed it in, and then you had to pump yeah. it up, and then you could pull the trigger a bunch yeah. of times. Yeah. It nice. was pretty awesome. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they do make uh, super soakers these days, because the, the super soaker line got pretty uh, intense. Because you would have like a bazooka <laughs> super oh. soaker type thing, and you know, all types so yeah, don't, yeah, that was pretty fun. There was only a handful of them when I, when I was gonna say when I was a kid, when yeah. we were kids. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but your kids don't play squirt gun fights in the backyard um, or anything. No, like that? not really. You know, it's I don't know. I mean, as a parent, maybe there's other people out there who can relate. But as um, I don't know. It's just different playing with, even if it's toy, even if it's like a fluorescent orange gun. It's a, you know the whole different thing. times. Yeah, just different times. Oh man, and that makes me think of one of my favorite games was duck hunt. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's yeah. probably no zappers or Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that was yeah. I don't know. I used to get so mad at Duck Hunt because I don't know, I was terrible. I had to sit right up at the TV. Cuz I don't know, I always felt like the game was cheating. <laughs> That's <laughs> cheating sitting right next to the TV. So wait, did you yeah. know that the the second controller controlled the duck? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no, I did know because uh yeah, anytime I would play with somebody else, they're like making it do all this. I'm like just Make it fly straight. <laughs> yeah. I uh, So I have a sister, and I remember several times when we were playing, and it was her turn with the gun. Yeah. I uh, never told her that I could control the duck, and I would yeah. just be sitting there on the floor with a controller, like, beside my leg. Yeah. And I'd make the duck fly behind the bush or yeah. the tree. <laughs> so it would just hang out going yeah. back and forth, like, behind the bush or behind the tree. Yeah. And, 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 and I remember a couple times she commented, like, why... Isn't it just flying like what yeah. it flies like yeah. for you? It just goes <laughs> yeah. across the screen, yeah. and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think the I think the dog was the worst part too to make you mad because he laugh at yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ever play su- Super Smash Bros? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. You can you can be the yeah. duck. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, you had something you want to talk about? Okay. Yeah. So um, so have you ever uh, sold anything on uh, like Facebook Marketplace or? Uh, Craigslist back in the day. You, do, do people do you even know Craigslist? People do use that anymore? Is you know, uh, I don't think so. And uh, this is why I know that. Uh, well, first, let me answer your question. Yes, mm-hmm. I have sold things yeah. on uh, Facebook Marketplace. Mm-hmm. But uh, a couple years ago, I wanted to sell uh, a stand up jet ski mm-hmm. and a four wheeler. Yeah. And I was actually talking to your wife about this. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, should I just sell it on craigslist and she basically instructed me that craigslist is for creeps okay (laughs) yeah and i had no idea and she said it has to be on facebook marketplace and i didn't even have a facebook page at the time yeah so i had to set up a facebook page and then she kind of showed me like how to use it but it was (laughs) it was uh it was a decent experience it was nice that people just yeah communicated with me through the app and it seemed to be a lot easier than like responding to emails and stuff like that okay yeah um so I've never really had to sell anything on uh, 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 Marketplace or anything. But uh, the other day I uh, picked up my phone and I had uh, my phone will like tell me that there's uh, whatever pictures that I took from whatever. It just reminds me of old pictures. Okay. And I had looked at them this day and somehow I took a screenshot of a Facebook Marketplace post and somebody was like selling a half-eaten uh, McDonald's cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and uh, the description <laughs> said like, uh, you know, this was so delicious or something. And I just thought it was hilarious. It uh, was why I took that picture. But I don't know. There's been some other posts on there that are just kind of bizarre. You know, um, there was one I saw that uh, somebody was selling a car um, and it was a nice like uh, antique car. But they were selling a picture of the car. They were not selling you the like. Wait, and how much did they have it listed? They had it listed for like fifty bucks, but like, and then in description they were describing the car, and then at the very bottom of the description they put like, "This is just a picture of the car." Like you're not actually getting the car. Okay, (laughs) we were just talking about scams a minute ago, and to be honest. The picture of the car picture thing, that yeah. feels a little too far because yeah. that gets really into like deception. Yeah. Although selling half a sandwich, yeah. <laughs> I actually think that's hilarious. Yeah. And if somebody's stupid enough to buy half a yeah. sandwich from me, I figure, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe we should just go to McDonald's after this. Yeah. Just buy a bunch of sandwiches, tear yeah. them in half. Yeah. Double our money. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. That sounds like a real good plan. I like that. Although the problem is, is who's going to show up to your house to pick that sandwich yeah, up? Yeah, right. Because they probably passed the restaurant on the way. Yeah. Be like, I could have yeah. just got a full sandwich. Because of where I live, it, you would have had to. Yeah, you yeah. probably would have had to drive right by it. So I don't know. It's just interesting, you know that uh, that just funny that people did that. And then uh, and then researching because um, I'm like, I can't be the only one. Like, there's got to be tons of other crazy you know, Facebook marketplace posts out there. And uh, I did find some where like a lot of them are typos, you know, where somebody's like, you know, instead of like exercise bike, they type excessive bike. Yeah. So like, you're like, what is an excessive bike? You know, like, you know, I have thought if I had more disposable income, yeah. I probably would waste a lot of money on yeah. there. Cause after she helped me set it up and yeah. I sold my stuff a couple years ago, Yeah. I would look around and there was all kinds <laughs> of just messed up things on there. Yeah. In fact, I saw a YouTuber. This was a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Remember the Dodge Neon from the nineties? Oh yeah. He bought a lifted Dodge Neon just to off road, okay. and it, it looked kind of cool. And yeah. I was like, uh, I kind of want it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I knew we were going to talk about this, so I looked up um, Facebook Marketplace earlier today, mm-hmm. and I saw someone took like a sports quad, like a like a four wheeler, but not like the work one, but like like one for like racing and going fast and stuff. Yeah. And they basically removed the gas engine, put an electric engine in there, and then removed the seat area and put a Yeti cooler in there yeah. so they could drive their cooler around the yard. Yeah. And I kind of thought, <laughs> yeah. Eh, yeah, I kind of want that too. Yeah. Although they were selling for $3,000. Oh, wow. So, yeah. I, I mean, maybe if the thing goes like 50, mm-hmm. but. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. Is it, is it even road legal? Well, I don't think a four wheeler isn't road legal, yeah. anyways. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. But yeah, it uh, you find some crazy stuff on there. But yeah. to answer your question, yes, I have sold things on mm-hmm. marketplace. I've never bought anything on marketplace. Yeah, but uh, I never sold anything on Craigslist. But I've, I think we've all looked at the oh yeah. most interesting <laughs> yeah. part of Craigslist. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's true. You know, nobody, everybody out there knows. Yeah, what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we used to talk about that at work. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a point during the day where a lot of us would just be working independently on things, mm-hmm. but it didn't require a ton of, generally, a ton of uh, concentration. Mm-hmm. And people would constantly read them back and forth. Like, oh, yeah. Like, oh, this person's looking for someone who's yeah. really into this. Yeah. And then we'd all <laughs> chuckle and then yeah. just keep working. Yeah. 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 Because for people who are not aware that on Craigslist, Man, I don't know even know if I should admit this. No. <laughs> but there was a what section. What do you want to admit? But no, but there's a section on there that you could look for. Like it was like men seeking women. It was what, you know whatever. It was like, a personal <laughs> section. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and they would get pretty specific. Like yeah. like I'm into people that do these things, and yeah. I want these things, right. and, and you're like, whoa, yeah. yeah. <laughs> please show up at my house yeah. at seven thirty. <laughs> yeah, you know there was one that it, well, I will never forget though because it was um. Uh, this woman and she said like she was like looking for a man um and it was like uh 
it was uh, she abbreviated it. It was like like S F D or something like that. But basically, <laughs> she, she was very descriptive. Like she's looking for a man to show up at her house, you know, like once or twice a week to like to do some work or like put in some work. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to decipher the code you just yeah. used. Which, which hold on, I don't know. Wait, wait a second. It's yeah, single yeah. female searching for Well no, you, but you didn't say S F D. Well 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 she didn't like yeah, but no, but in her description, like she said the work like you, it's not where you. Th- it's not what you think. Oh, I know okay. what you're. Yeah, it's okay. not what you think. Because what she wanted was she wanted somebody to shovel her front driveway. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and she really yeah. means the driveway. Yeah, yeah, hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that's not where I thought this was going. Okay, okay, so one of the things we were talking about was um, online shopping. Yeah. Did I say wasm? One of the have. things we were talking about <laughs> is uh, online shopping. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about how that affects, what, physical locations, brick and mortar stores, yeah. and how things have changed. Yeah. And you were saying, what, uh, that you're for the change? No, no you're you against the change. I don't know, because I'm all over the place. Mm. Because, uh, because I've you know, benefit from online shopping quite a bit. Um, you know, there's a lot of like, which I don't buy a lot of obscure things, but there's sometimes there's things that you need that like, they don't stock it anywhere else in the store, you know, or at a store, True. you know, so you have to buy it online. And nowadays you can buy things online. You can get it the next day, which is great for like, if you have like an emergency repair on a car or something like that. And the part is not available anywhere else you know there are just some things that i would normally get from what was it called like a grocery store or something Mm -hmm. that i just prefer to order online yeah because i feel like what's going to happen is i'm going to go to the grocery store and there's going to be a lot of standing around Mm -hmm. trying to figure out the exact one i need Mm -hmm. like an example would be i had uh at the last place i lived these little like halogen light bulbs Mm -hmm. for uh for the uh, for the bathroom, there was like this like uh, like light bar thing. I don't know. One of mm-hmm. the lights burned out. Yeah, and I took it out, and I thought that's a unique plug. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure like a like a Myers or or maybe even a Walmart or something probably carries this. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't seem that weird. Yeah, but since I didn't, it wasn't like a normal light bulb. I didn't know exactly what I needed. So what mm-hmm. I did is I went online and I looked it up. Yeah, and then once I looked it up and I found the exact thing that I wanted. I just clicked by. Yeah. Yeah. Which I know that's the time we're living in now, but I'm sure that there has to be people who kind of miss being like, well, honey, I got to get a light bulb for the bathroom. I'll be back in a couple minutes. Uh, I got to run to the hardware store. And which I don't know, maybe people don't miss that. Like, see, you know, I don't. If I were at one of these, um, you know, hardware store, grocery store, whatever, I'm sure this is exactly how it, it would be. Mm-hmm. I'd be standing there in the aisle looking around for something that seemed to have that type of socket. Mm -hmm. And then when I found the area that had the type of socket, then I'd have to figure out, well, which color, like color temperature I wanted. Mm -hmm. And is this one dimmable? And is, you know, what's the wattage? And, Mm -hmm. and then, oh, is this going to fit into the, into the, um, the light bar thing I've got. Yeah. And, and I feel like that's going to be at least 15, 20 minutes of me being like, what is going on? Yeah. And then to find somebody to help you sucks. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of just typed in exactly what was on the side of the light bulb mm-hmm. into the app. Yeah. And it just brought it right up. And yeah. I was like, this is exactly what I need. Yeah. Okay. But so I know that we have the benefit of all that on our side right now, but, before all that, before you can just look it up online, you would take the bulb with you to the store. And even if you didn't find somebody to help you, you kind of... Sure, I've done know, that before. Yeah, you kind of know what you're looking for. Whatever. Although I will say yeah. now, I'll take a couple pictures of it with mm-hmm. my phone and sometimes yeah. not bring the actual right. thing. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, it was still it was still workable. You were still able to do that and have some good results. And so I don't know how I feel about the whole thing. It's But is that better than just... Doing it from your phone and just ordering it? Well, no. See, I don't know. I'm, I'm conflicted. I don't know. I don't know. 
it does have a benefit. You got to wait the next day, but then uh, you start getting into the idea of like, uh, yeah, that's convenient. But then is there such thing as like too much convenience? Is there such thing as like, is there? I don't think I've reached that yet because I I need things more convenient and I want them now. (laughs) But then you could go to the store now. Like, yeah, you order it online and you'll get it. What? As early as the next day, possibly, you know, the day after or whatever. But yeah, but then I don't know. You can go to the store, you know, and then although when I used to live in the city, there was same day delivery. Yeah. In fact, there was a service out. This is in the early 2000s. It was called Cosmo. And the deal was they had a website and they sold everything. They sold um, like like living room furniture yeah. they also sold like televisions but then they would sell like frozen dinners and mm-hmm. movies and video games yeah. and they had a pretty good used video game and used movie area mm-hmm. and my friends and i would order from them all the time especially like if we uh, a couple of my friends i worked with and we do something like well let's go over to my house tonight or their house tonight or whatever mm-hmm. and sometimes we'd want like a new movie to watch or a new video game to play we go on there we find out what we wanted mm-hmm. Their entire deal was is that they, everything had to be delivered within an hour. But now it was only for the city. Yeah, It was only available in certain cities. But the thing is, is we'd make the order right before we left work. And then about the time we got home, mm-hmm. it would be there. And it was it was actually really awesome. Yeah. And I would love more of that. But the, I live kind of in a very rural area, so... Mm-hmm. There, there isn't really any delivery anything around here other than stuff that comes from like FedEx or right. UPS or something. Yeah, and I don't know. I'm sure that there, I'm sure that there are some uh, upsides, quite a few upsides to having more things online now because you know now you don't have to really drive like forty minutes to the store to get some things. But I don't know. Once again, I'm I'm up and down on the whole thing because. I mean, I get like, if you need something right now, you run to the store. Yeah. But if I can wait until like the next day, a lot Mm -hmm. of times I'm like, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Because sometimes, I mean, even if you could wait till the next day, you would just go out the next day to get it. It wouldn't, even though that's just extra, whatever. But if I could use the time that I would, in my mind, waste going to the store, Mm -hmm. I'd rather just keep that time for me. This is my personal time. I I want as much of it as I can have. Well, the the rise of online shopping has like a huge like impact and implications for like the rest of our society. So it's not just, you know, personal convenience. You know, there's other things at play here too. So, you know, one thing that we mentioned was like, you know, I don't know if there's any more malls uh yeah. in in society. And when I was a kid, we used to lo- I used to love Going to the mall. Oh, really? Well, I don't know. I love going to the mall, but but actually, <laughs> actually, probably because like when I grew up, it was it was huge. There was actually two malls like close to my home. Oh, and um, one of them was huge. It had like two floors, two or three floors, hmm. um, tons of stores. And the other one was just one floor, but it was kind of more wide open. You know. Okay, I will say that I liked like the food court area. Oh yeah, in that malls was awesome. Because <laughs> normally. Well, normally I wouldn't get fast food, but if we were there already, and then the cool part was is everyone could just choose something different, mm-hmm. and then you all come back to the table, right. which was nice. Yeah. But then um, the other thing I would say is I like to go, when I was younger, to music stores. Yeah. <laughs> which don't exist anymore. No. Unfortunately not. But um, I'd rather have the music we have now where I can just open up an app on my phone and yeah. listen to really yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about because a lot of malls have been closing, which I don't necessarily have a problem with. I don't like shopping. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I think the interesting thing is, is that they're closing because of competition with Amazon. Yeah. And I looked it up. Between 2016 and 2019, Amazon had converted 25 malls into fulfillment centers. Oh, wow. Because you got a huge building yeah, that's not true. being used. Yeah. And they need a huge building. Yeah. So they just converted it. Oh, wow. So what the stores, like individual stores are still there? They didn't like, I, the store and like make it a giant open. So the, the major stores at a mall um, are called the anchor stores. Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, used to be like, like Sears yep, or yep. JCPenney's or something. Mm-hmm. I think they were using those. And then 
they were using some of the inner portion of the mall, but you know, no, all the stores and stuff were just scrubbed out okay. and it was just made into as large of room oh, as they wow. could handle. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's sad to think about. That doesn't like get you in the feels like you no. like thinking about this mall maybe that I used to go to as a kid is now no, just no. A- I, I think of this is just evolution. <laughs> Like like uh, technology, society, everything changes. Yeah, this is something I don't have a problem with. It would be like, you know, back in the day, everyone used to ride a horse. Yeah, so nobody rides a horse anymore, <laughs> except well, for, for recreation. <laughs> I mean, are you saying like kids are missing out on like? Well, listen, I never rode a horse, but I'm sure that there's people who uh, still. It's all right. I've like, done it a couple of times. Yeah. It smells like horse shit. Yeah, <laughs> who like ride a horse to the store? That seems pretty cool. If your dream of of having a good weekend is sitting on top of a wild animal as it poops and pees all yes. over the place, then uh, listen, they don't have the luxury of like being like, oh, excuse me, we got to stop and I got to go to the bathroom. Horses can't do that, so they gotta just go <laughs> while while you're right there. <laughs> but no, I'm just saying a car is so much easier to use for transportation. Yeah, but I don't know. That's I don't know. That's different. That's different. That's a little. Plus, think of how the cities changed because yeah. the cities used to just be covered with horse crap, and yeah. now okay, okay, but wait, no, but that's not even the good analogy. Now it's just smog not a good analogy, and, and, though, because... and oil slicks, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and polluted air. Yeah, yeah. So it isn't any better. It's just, it's just a different. It's just a different stench. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then we've then evolved we'll yeah. into a different problem. <laughs> well, listen, I don't know. I would. I am still on the fence because I don't know. I would still. Enjoy having some uh, malls in the area uh, and keeping some of those brick and mortar stores. Wait, you live in a town where I happen to know that there's a half dead mall. Well, yeah. yeah. Are, do you go there? Uh, no, because they gutted all the stuff that I would go to the store Ugh. for. I, I would gladly support the mall, but they keep taking all the stuff out. Because I remember <laughs> when that was new. Yeah. And I went there a couple of times. I'm like, this is not for me. Yeah. <laughs> this is it's people all over the place. It's annoying. Yeah. Like when you were a kid, did you ever like uh, tell your friends like, hey, I'm going to be at the mall at seven. Just meet me near the water fountain. Every no. mall has got a water fountain. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they that, do. You know, well, uh, <laughs> then you better get your fill <laughs> yeah. sooner rather than yeah. later, because I was also looking it up. <laughs> and uh, th- these are just some of the big stores that seem to be having problems over either right now or yeah. or um, in the past year or so. Mm-hmm. But uh, Best Buy has closed a bunch of locations. Oh, wow. Uh, Party City uh, filed for bankruptcy. Oh, no way. <laughs> Dollar <laughs> General. You never went to Party City. Yes, Come I on. have. Yeah. Oh, I would go there. <laughs> I'm calling <laughs> bullshit. I seriously would go there a lot. <laughs> okay, uh, Dollar General has had a lot of locations shut down, although okay. I think that's for, like, unsafe work environments and maybe yeah. Yeah. security issues mm-hmm. and stuff. But uh, CVS is looking to close... CVS? Yeah. Like nine, the medical store? Yeah. CV- 900 locations in the <laughs> next three years. Uh, Bed Bath & Beyond just filed bankruptcy, and actually, that one actually kind of ticks me off. Yeah. Because... Every, I don't know, 10 years or so, I need more towels and yeah, more yeah. sheets and yeah. stuff. And that's where I always went. Yeah. And now I'm thinking, you know what? I do need some more towels. And are, listen, are they still open where you live? Because I should run over there and get towels yeah, before they, <laughs> listen, they go under. That's huge because you know that there are like mothers and sisters and wives all over the country who would always get some type of bed, bed bath and beyond little gift basket for Mother's Day or Christmas. Mothers, sisters, and wives. Are like, we being like, sexist right now? Is that what's going no, on? No, but I'm just saying, like... Put down in the comment if whatever. you think this is a sexist <laughs> comedy just me. But you this know, old guy. <laughs> but you know that there are, like, people who are like, I don't know what to get uh, mom for Christmas or Mother's Day. Well, we go to Bed Bath & Beyond and get her some um, hand sanitizer and some face scrub. Hey, you know? all I'm saying is that <laughs> I like the fancier soaps once in a while. And for a Father's Day... yeah. I gave my dad fancy soap. Yeah. He really liked it. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, see, so it's well, good see, for guys too. Well, see, that's the other thing. And see, Not like what Slim wants us to believe. And, then, and, and you can't even test it when you're buying it online because you just got to go based off what the description says. You go to Bed Bath & Beyond, you can like, you know, have some go in your hand a little bit and, you know, see if it's too strong of a smell. And I'm telling Here, you. Here's the funniest <laughs> part about this whole thing. 
is I got some uh, free uh, soap with this uh, <laughs> thing I did. They they gave them out as prizes, but yeah. they were from a certain company, and and I liked it. It was a small company online, so I ordered some more, and yeah. I like those. Yeah. And so the soaps I gave to my dad were oh, from yeah. online. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't smell them at a time. <laughs> so, they smelled so wrong. amazing, yeah. though. <laughs> Oh man! So they're closing. What else? What else did you say? Um, that was pretty much it. Except for mm-hmm. the Nordstroms, looks like they're shutting down everything in Canada. Um, but there's a lot of big companies that just can't compete with online. And my yeah. deal is, is it feels like uh, uh, Blockbuster. I'm thinking, what's oh the name? yeah, yeah. Because Blockbuster had a chance to buy Netflix, mm-hmm. and they looked at Netflix like, why do we need you? Yeah. And I feel like evolve yeah these places need to evolve and it's not like you know like amazon how do i say this i feel like people think that amazon is going to crush the small the small like Mm -hmm. mom and pop stores yeah and maybe there's a little bit of that but if you really pay attention to when you buy things on amazon Mm -hmm. a lot of times they're fulfilled by another company yeah and those are the mom and pop stores Mm -hmm. i know or i've worked with um I shouldn't say worked with. I bought things from small places yeah. on Amazon. Yeah. And I've had to interact with them for things. And they're just like, hey, you know, we basically run this out of our house and we have mm-hmm. all of our products shipped to Amazon and they hold everything. So why aren't these bigger places evolving mm-hmm. to more online? You know, second biggest online retailer mm-hmm. right now is uh, uh, Walmart. Mm-hmm. And they evolved. Why can't places like Best Buy and, and, and those evolve to have a bigger mm-hmm. online presence? There well, must have been something that Walmart did to earn that. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I know that, um, you know, during, uh, I don't know, Best Buy did have, I mean, they have like their online store, but maybe there's another aspect of it that I'm missing. But I know during the pandemic, uh, a bunch of stores kind of adapted that way and, you know, would do tons of, you know, pickup orders. Um, some of them were like only pickup orders. So you order online and right. then you go to the store and just, you know, tell them when you get there and, or you can go in and just pick your order up and walk out. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what's changed since then. Maybe, maybe moving away from that, um, thinking that people would love to go back into the store. Uh, you know, so you can like test out what you're gonna buy. Like, look at the TV in person before you buy it. Yeah, you know? I get that. Like, I have a real problem buying clothes online. Yeah. Sometimes I'll even pull this move. I'll go to the store. I'll because I want to try something on. Because mm-hmm. um, it's hard to tell if I can fit if if I fit yeah. if my fat body fits in these clothes correctly. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> But then, if, then once once I get something that I like, then I'll order it online. Yeah, because I'll order the exact same oh, yeah. one. Yeah, online. But I don't know. I I for everything else, I'd yeah. Like for the last television I bought, I just bought it online. In fact, I bought it from um, Walmart. Yeah, <laughs> and they, yeah. they had they had an awesome deal, mm-hmm. and I was like, well, that's exactly what I want. And now mm-hmm. I don't have to go anywhere. Yeah. Man, it was like a week later, and it was in my driveway. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm still conflicted on it. I mean, I know that there's other aspects, too, that are happening around in this country that are affecting stores staying open, and, you know, but, man, I do kind of, I don't know. I never was a big shopper, but I do miss that a little bit, especially the malls, man. That's a big deal. <laughs> you know what I think is weird is, like, there's, like, secondary ripples to all of this. Mm-hmm. So remember um, Toys R Us when we were a kid? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, now that was a highlight of my my yeah. childhood. Yeah. If I could get to go into Toys R Us and play around yeah. for a little while, yeah. that was definitely <laughs> a store I wanted to go to. Yeah, But, you know, they don't exist anymore. Mm. And I was reading online that stores of that size that are generally more like in a strip mall kind of mm-hmm. scenario... They have been converted, a lot of them, into UPS and FedEx locations. Oh, okay. Which makes sense. Mm-hmm. They already have a big building, yeah. and everyone's going to online anyway. So mm-hmm. the, the secondary effect is, you know, all the shipping companies and everything mm-hmm. else. Yeah. 
it's it, I know the change is happening fast. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like you have to get on board. There's really no, you know, other option. But it's just a you know it's just a big deal because there are people who, you know, even though everyone's got a phone, right? You know, some people don't want to go through all that. You know, people don't want to have an email address or worry about all that extra. You know, just want to go to the store. Who doesn't uh, have an email address? There's tons of people who don't have email address. I mean, maybe older people now. But <laughs> <laughs> I've got several. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. It's just a it's a big change for a lot of people. I'm not trying to say I'm like stuck in the past or whatever. I do tons of online, you know, things and purchases or whatever. And, you know, that's, that's where our life is right now, but. I don't know. Earlier, you said that uh, Bed Bath and Beyond was only for women. Uh, no, no. Listen, I was <laughs> I was saying that you put words. In my Everyone, mouth. back you put up words to that. Mouth. Rewatch it and put, then come back. Put, okay, whatever. Okay. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, about the other thing that we did talk about a little bit earlier, uh, the other s- aspect of more online shopping is uh, a lot of theft that's happening in a lot of these retail stores. You know, which yeah, it looks like Walmart's got a real problem. Yeah, because they 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 converted over to self checkouts. Yeah, and they're having people that are just faking scanning. Yeah, yeah, which I'm sure that's happening at other retailers too, where people are, um, you know, maybe somehow scanning one item and they got fifty, or maybe scanning the same thing. Like if they got some bananas that are like a dollar, and they scan it like for every thing that's in their cart. <laughs> Nobody's looking over there, so maybe you have Wait, like. Is that a thing? Yeah. Are you teaching people crime? No, right listen, now? listen. Crime does not pay people. Don't take on these things we're talking unless, about. Unless you take the banana, yeah. And then you. Yeah, and you're scanning the banana, like. And you put the eight dollar steak in the bag, and then you scan yeah, the dollar. Yeah, yeah. You scan the banana. Yeah, look. You already know what to do. You, you. I'm learning <laughs> as you're. T- you're a great teacher. <laughs> listen, don't don't take my advice for this. Don't even do this. But it's happening. You know, and that's terrible. That's terrible. People should be more honest and and uh, pay for all your groceries. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think a lot of people <laughs> think that they're just sticking it to a big corporation. Yeah. But what I mean, what happens if you cause a place like like yeah to fail? Yeah. Then real people are going to lose their jobs. Right. Yeah. Because didn't the CEO just recently say that they were going to close a whole bunch of stores if this stuff kept happening? Oh yeah. Yeah. And and the other thing too is that like if you go into a lot of these stores to have to deal with the high theft, like all these things, there's so many things that are like locked up in cages or like which well, you don't go to stores so you wouldn't know any of this. I mean, I do know uh, <laughs> what was just recently I bought a memory card. Mm-hmm. That's right. I bought a yeah. memory card for yeah. for this. Yeah. And I needed it immediately. Mm-hmm. I I wasn't sure if the device that we bought Came with a memory card. It mm-hmm. was very vague when I bought yeah. it online. Yeah. And then I opened it and we were going to record. And I, I'm like, I need a memory card right now. So I ran to the store and got one. Yeah. And it was annoying because try finding help in a lot of these stores. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wandering around from aisle to aisle like, okay, I know what I want. It's right over there. Mm-hmm. And I need somebody to unlock it for me. Yeah. <laughs> and so you go into these places and like even the, even in like a Target or Walmart or whatever, and you go to something you would even think like the pharmacy area or to grocery or like cosmetics and everything is like locked up in a cage or it's got some little wrap on it. And uh, cause people just, you know, are like stealing everything. Yeah. You know? Hmm. So it's pretty, pretty unfortunate that we're got to go through all that now. Yeah. But, all right. Well, um, that's, uh, that's all I had. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I had too. And, um, Please, like we talked about a lot of things in this uh, last couple of minutes of this podcast. So if you've got any feedback, uh, let us know in the comments, uh, whether it's on uh, this, you know, squatting situation going on or, you know, us losing all these stores. Yeah, I really feel like what you've just done is given a great handbook on how to commit crimes. I didn't. I didn't. Don't commit crimes. Don't commit crimes. I mean, I say don't okay. commit crimes. Yeah, I would say I would, no, don't commit crime. Okay. Crime does not pay. Mm-mm. Crime doesn't pay, and well, unless you're going to get the hundred thousand dollars for squatting mm-hmm. in that whatever million dollar place. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it kind of feels like it's paying. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Thank you for watching. 